With all these movies, writing a series of teen novels, and recording an album, where does Pickle see herself in 10 years? Hopefully I'll be at the Oscars. I mean, who knows, right? The Oscars are a joke at this point anyway. Casually glances at my La La Land poster out of frame. This is a video, believe it or not, that I've wanted to make for a long time because there is a film in existence called Keep Watching, starring pre-Tana Bella Thorne. If you've never heard of this movie, then lucky you. But I wouldn't be surprised because this is a 2017 horror movie that never got a theatrical release. Well, technically that's not true. It did get a theatrical release for one day. I'm not kidding. One night. And then it was cast into VOD Oblivion, never to be marketed again. So why am I talking about it? Well, <laughs> because this is the God's honest truth. I've been anticipating this movie for years, since before it was released. And in similar vein to another movie that I reviewed recently, Keep Watching was filmed in 2013, when, at the time, I was very eagerly following its production details. Look, I have a confession to make. I, Audrey Graywin, at age 13, was in love with a certain member of a TV show called The Walking Dead. Was it Daryl or Shane or Glenn, I hear you asking? No. <laughs> It was Carl. Played by Chandler Riggs. Full disclosure, Chandler Riggs and I are the same age. And I was in love with that moody, slightly emo phase of Carl. Like, after his prepubescence, but before you could mistake him for a girl. Right around the time he ate the pudding. And as a fangirl, naturally, I kept up with everything that he was involved in. Hence, Keep Watching. Keep Watching is a found footage movie. I'm kidding, but I'm sure you can see where this is going. The premise centers on an isolated family who are attacked by masked intruders and are subjected to video surveillance of the house being broadcasted to people tuning in. Formerly known as Home Invasion, back when it was being filmed, but they changed the title upon 2017 release. I did some research and found that there was actually a film in 2016 called Home Invasion that was released, and that was probably the reason for the name switch. And this movie centers on an isolated family who are attacked by masked intruders and are subjected to video surveillance of the hat way. I'm not trying to imply that anyone ripped anyone off, but honestly, let me know if you want me to make a video about this movie because it looks <laughs> interesting. Anyways, if you couldn't tell, I eventually lost interest in my zombie crush and completely forgot about the movie, but recently it popped into my head like a fucking tumor. So naturally I had to watch it. And I also recorded my reaction to the movie, so you'll be graced with that throughout the video. Jumping right into the fuckery, I would like to mention that there is not a version of this movie that exists in high quality. And I purchased this movie on YouTube, and the highest resolution available was 480p. Immediately we're introduced to the antagonist, who, to reiterate the plot of the movie, hide a fuck ton of cameras in a certain family's house while said family is away. And then they live stream the home invasion to people online. They preemptively stalk the family beforehand, and in this case, they focus their attention on Bella Thorne. I'm obviously not going to be referring to everyone by their character names from the movie, so let's just get the cast out of the way now. We have Jamie, who I'll just be calling Bella, her younger brother, DJ, who I'll be referring to as Carl, because he's literally dressed exactly like his character from The Walking Dead in this. Their stepmother, who... <laughs> I can't remember her name. I've seen this movie several times now. My initial reaction... Whoops, did I accidentally click on Bella Thorne's OnlyFans account? Another time writing the script, and another, another time where I was paying extremely close attention the entire way through, which I'll get into later. And I legit cannot remember her name. I'll just be referring to her as boobs because that's pretty much the only reason she's in the movie It's just to have boobs. I'm not being perverted, okay? Look at the thumbnail for the trailer. Boobs. boobs. And then the dad, whose character name is Carl, <laughs> which is really funny. But for obvious reasons, I'll just be referring to him as Reed Richards. There's also a weird uncle character, but he's not important and dies immediately, so. Right away, we're shown the completely fucked physics of the cameras in the movie. Bella Thorne walks into a therapy session and... Are you feeling scared? No. Wait, how can we hear what she's saying? Is the room bugged? How did they do that? Is this plain ass hoe really so important that you risk being caught before the actual invasion just to hear about her mommy issues? Cockroaches and they're just... They're just eating away at her. Then the family leaves for vacation 
The intruders prepare the house full of cameras and the show begins. Look, this next part of the video is just going to be me pointing out the insane physics of these cameras, specifically the placement of them. Otherwise, it would just be me doing that throughout the entire video. So without further ado, No. 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 What? The ceiling fan? What was the point? Okay, you can clearly see this angled shot of her, and in the next shot is- there's no camera there. There's no fucking camera. We've seen what these cameras look like. They aren't fucking invisible. My god, just put a picture frame there. Do something. No. Just the drawing? Fucking really? Not standing in front of it? Standing in front of it. What are you gonna see from this angle? Oh, her being a dumbass. This isn't mounted on anything. This shot and her webcam on the screen look completely different. Really? Why the hell not? Good thing he holds this flashlight completely upright. God forbid he doesn't know he's in a fucking movie. Why is this mounted camera moving? No! Fuck you. You see this face Bella Thorne is making? This face here? Yeah. Get used to it. Because she makes that face the entire movie. Mm. How do you eat this? It's delicious. Ugh. Oh. Smells good. So Bella starts complaining about her wallpaper or something. Uh, what happened to the wallpaper in my room? Just feeling it out. I don't remember anybody ever having a problem with my wallpaper before. Then complains to her boyfriend. I've left you like a thousand messages. Then complains to her brother. DJ! DJ! There's an angry dad on the phone looking for the one called Chowder! The entire family spends like two hours fucking around the house. It's 11 at night and we just got home from a very lengthy vacation, but eh, time for a bath. What are you gonna see through that keyhole? Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Shit. Pothead uncle shows up for some reason. Again, I don't know why he's in the movie. My guess would be to draw out the runtime. This movie is an hour and 29 minutes with credits. And 90% of it is just people walking around a room with nothing happening. Look, I get that I've already gone over how the physics of the cameras don't make sense, but this is the first instance of many of the intruders just doing the impossible. Did they hack the piano? <laughs> the fucking distorted image. Do you remember that shitty Disney movie, Smart House? Remember that reference, because this type of shit happens a lot going forward. Just, you just gotta chill. Believe me, I know. That's why I self-medicate. <laughs> really? Okay, there is no universe where Bella Thorne is offered weed and throws it away. Ladies and gentlemen, let the family drama ensue. Olivia is trying to destroy my life. He's my brother. What am I supposed to do? Do you see us staying together? Talk to me. Just wanted to see if you're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, come on. That's bull crap. Now, what do you, as a viewer, think any of this has to do with the overall story? I'll give you a hint. Nothing. Anyways, the family goes to sleep finally. Except for the pothead uncle, who goes outside to investigate a noise. Because that's something regular people do, right? Is that a cow? Like, I live on a farm, you guys. I know what cows sound like. And for a second, I actually took off my headphones and looked out my window because I thought it was a cow. Bull crap. Also, the intruders had no way of knowing that the uncle was gonna be there. He just showed up, and somehow they already had a death planned for him. <laughs> Him. Oh wow, she might be pregnant. Oh my God, I care so much for these characters right now. This is such a tense and riveting moment. I was so invested. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That's really funny. The intruders somehow managed to very loudly bar up every entrance to this massive house before anyone wakes up. And when they do... They put a camera in his headphones. His fucking Call of Duty headset. At first I thought they'd somehow sewed a camera into his shirt, but no, it's in his headset, which gives them the excuse to record from the POV of a person. Now this is stupid for multiple reasons, partly because it was an extreme assumption to make that he would just fall asleep wearing his headset and then wear the bulky thing around for the remainder of the movie, which is what he ends up doing, but also because the camera is around his neck, but the POV is as if it's on his face. Which is really funny if you go through the rest of the movie imagining him turning his entire body like this to look at things. Why didn't they just have his character wear glasses? Then the intruders could just install a camera VHS style. Sure, it'd be hard to explain how they did that, but it's already hard to explain how they do things. And it's a lot more believable than this kid walking around wearing gigantic headphones while his family is getting murdered. just like to point out that this moment right here is the halfway point of the movie. You could literally skip the first 40 minutes of this 80 minute movie and you would not miss a thing. Callie! I am so completely invested in the character who is dying right now. Get off of him! <laughs> <laughs> Better stretch out that runtime a little more. 80 minutes isn't gonna make itself. Hey Bella, you want to make an actual facial expression during this movie? No? Okay. What is that? What the actual fuck? Remember the smart house reference I made? These motherfuckers even hacked the lamp to make things extra spoopy. It's ridiculous. It's like Jamie. Like she's a total god. Oh, and the closest part is I think my brother has like a crush on her. What the hell is that? Okay. Did they sneak into her locker room to do this? What a wild coincidence that she happened to be talking shit about her entire family on the phone in front of an open locker at this very moment. Is that you? <gasps> what is that? What's what? I hear something. It's okay. Just keep calm. You hear that? What is that? I hear something. Shh. Just stay together. <laughs> what? Wait. Okay, so she's going to get her cell phone that she clearly hears vibrating. Then they get distracted by a taser that the intruders left because part of the show is giving the family weapons to fight back. Still making the same face though. Kill or be killed. They want us to fight back. Wow, that's crazy. Hey, do you want to keep looking for your cell phone? Stay close, right? Wait, wait, wh what about her cell phone? They completely forgot about the cell phone after 30 seconds. They're just leaving the room without it. Why are you so stupid? Jump scare. Jump scare. <laughs> Fucking do it! So they lock themselves in the basement and yay, the police are there. Hey! hey! Except no, because these people are fucking morons and somehow don't realize that it's coming from a very small speaker in the ceiling. They're screwing with us. No shit. We're all gonna die. I fucking hope so. Oh yeah, and Bella's boyfriend shows up completely unprompted and dies like two minutes after. Feel comfortable skipping that one. So Boobs decides to crawl out of the basement and look for help. Listen to me, all right? I want you to be strong for me. So much for staying together, I guess. That's a great idea. Turn on the spotlights. That won't alert anyone to your location at all. You're trying to hide, right? Hey, look, the uncle's still alive. Oh.
silence for boobs. She will be missed dearly. Now's a great time for me to mention just how fucking annoying the music in this movie is. Am I supposed to be scared? Honestly. Again with the smart house. Apparently table saws are hackable now too. <laughs> I don't know if you just caught that, but this giant toothpick completely incapacitated this person in two seconds. Sure, why the hell not? And this is the part of the movie that really pisses me off. It's one thing to have a shittily written horror movie, but at least put some effort behind making it consistent. But this scene right here is where the movie stops caring. It has been made abundantly clear that there are a crazy number of cameras in this kitchen, and they still feel the need to include these over the shoulder shots that are literally impossible. Now listen, at some point I'm sure you've probably gone, holy shit, there are a lot of fucking cameras in that house. And you'd be right. But I thought that the number of cameras that they utilized in this invasion was so ridiculous that I actually sat through the entire movie counting them. Counting every camera. I'm gonna have to go through this movie later and just count how many different uh, camera angles are actually in it. I'm gonna lose my sanity so doing it, but it'll probably yeah, be I astronomical by the end of this movie, I guarantee. I wanted to see what kind of numbers we were working with. And ladies and gentlemen, after sitting through 80 minutes of bullshit for the third time and doing my damnedest not to count the same camera angle twice, there are 285 cameras. 285. God, I should really get into the business of murdering people on the internet. They must be making bank to pay for all of this. This next scene is the most dramatic thing I've ever seen in my life. Please enjoy. What is that? I keep having this nightmare. Bugs, these spiders and cockroaches and they're just eating away at her. I can picture it. The screenwriter writing that scene of the screenplay and then jizzing all over his keyboard. Now, I actually like this next scene because we're finally introduced to the only characters in the movie that I gave a shit about. See if you can spot them. And as an additional ode to these characters' infinite stupidity, it is revealed that there was a landline telephone the entire time. Why are you doing this? Because. You stupid. So they use it to call the police, right? You, do you want to make a different face when you say that? You've been making the same face for the past 80 minutes. Hopefully I'll be at the Oscars. So Bella and Carl go to fight the remaining intruder and why the fuck would you put that on? There is no way that that mask does not restrict your vision, which is a little important to have when you're about to knife fight a dude that's seven feet tall. Fun fact, <laughs> this is true. This intruder is actually played by this actor from Where the Millers. White gringo with a haircut of a donkey. Uh, Just a fun thing to remember going forward. Okay, so now we're at the climax and this is the point right here where the director screenwriter, director of photography, and the editor all said, fuck it. Ah! 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 
Why was this a found footage movie? You're cutting the shots every half second. There was no reason for it to turn out like this. Who edited this movie? Christopher Cap? What other shit has this man- I think somebody trying else? to set me up. The fucking Hunger Games? What the fuck is happening? So Bella Thorne starts suffocating in a plastic bag and she just- hits the guy a few times. She doesn't try to pop the plastic over her mouth or anything. I mean, she has free range of her hands. Maybe it's thick plastic, but it isn't worth living to fucking try. Help me. Help me. What? Help me. What? Uh, 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 motherfucker, was you gonna wait for me to turn into a butterfly? Burn in hell, fucker. So much for the 285 cameras that are destroyed now. No, stop, you're gonna kill the fish! I swear to God if those fish die. say that this movie is horrible. Well, no, actually I am gonna say that because it's horrible. But sometimes horrible can be funny. And I have to admit, I had so much fun during my initial reaction. Babe, what's going on? I'm, I'm thinking of starting Nothing an OnlyFans. This is definitely the movie to watch if you enjoy trashy horror movies to just laugh at. But I have seen this movie multiple times now and it's just exhausting. I just don't understand this movie at all. It's like they started production with an interesting premise. Family in a house. Intruder films their suffering for the internet. And it seems like they committed themselves to the premise at first. But at some point they just completely gave up. Someday horror directors are gonna realize that people don't give a shit about characters who are incompetent fucks. A good horror movie works when you can see yourself in the victim's shoes. You say, oh yeah, if I was in that situation, I would make those same decisions too. When you make everyone in your movie a dumbass, it's like you're calling the audience stupid. I guess there wasn't much to worry about with this movie though. With a five million budget, it brought in a whopping $94,000 on the one night that it showed. Rest in peace, my Chandler Riggs crush. I probably would have been a lot nicer to this movie when I was 14. But the moral of the story is, if you want to watch an ex-Disney star be a total mess in a horrific setting, just go to Bella Thorne's Instagram account. It's way scarier than anything in this movie.